For the 2020 season of the Cumbres and Toltec, its schedule underwent a seismic shift. Due to the ongoing situation, trips from Chama were curtailed until later in September, while trips from Antonito resumed in mid-June, only a couple weeks later than the traditional Memorial Day weekend kickoff. To accommodate distancing requirements, these trains took on an extra length, not only abnormal for just this time of year, but for the railroad in general, and were only dispatched from the Antonito side. Later, in September, the basic operation of trains for each end of the line had resumed, but instead of seeing trains share the platform at Osier simultaneously, their arrivals would be staggered, and the option to run through on the full route was not possible. This was done both to prevent large crowds at the dining hall and to negate the need for buses that would have had would have had problems meeting social distancing requirements. We'll start here in the fall as 487 pulls out of the Chama Depot on a crisp, cool morning. After departing yard limits, we catch the 487 racing across the flats towards the Narrows, a location where the valley quickly becomes a gap in the mountains created by the Rio Chama. With the traverse of the Narrows complete, the 487 comes to Lake Lobato, a stock tank formed by the railroad crossing over an embankment. Shortly after, we cross over Wolf Creek, a tributary of the Rio Chama, on Lobato Trestle, installed in its current configuration in 1883. Rebuilt with new spans after a 2010 fire, this trestle is a highlight of this railroad. The train makes a large horseshoe after crossing Lobato Trestle. 
The railroad begins following Wolf Creek, which we'll follow to the summit at Cumbres. Here at Dalton, we catch the 487 and train as it passes the old Lobo Lodge. Near the state line, the railroad clings to the hillsides below the highway as it climbs towards Cresco, just a little bit further than this location. Skipping ahead to Coxo, the railroad makes its final climb alongside Wolf Creek and milepost 332 where the tracks cross the stream for the final time and swing back on another horseshoe bend to change direction to keep a decent grade.
Easing into Cumbre's yard limits, we round Windy Point, an outcropping of volcanic rock part of the Coneos Formation. These weathered rocks are part of the same formation that create the Phantom Curve some 19 miles to the east. Up ahead, we see the summit at Cumbres, where the locomotive will take on water from the standpipe across the tracks from the old section house that became the depot after the original was demolished following the conclusion of the San Juan Express in the early 1950s. Having surmounted the grade and done the requisite brake checks before descending, we catch back up to the train at Los Pinos. This wide glacial valley features another horseshoe to help the railroad change elevation and allows one to sit at one spot and view the train encircling the valley without changing location. Crossing the Rio de los Pinos, the train sweeps to the east side of the valley and will leave it here on its journey to Osier. This valley has been carved long ago by a glacier and was one of the few near level areas on the railroad outside of the Antonito area. On the other side of the range, 488 departs Antonito with an extra long train on its drawbar as it navigates the changing terrain, departing the floor of the San Luis Valley. The railroad heads up the Coneos Range by looping over the many lava escarpments, looping back on itself many times, including the famed Whiplash Curve. is seen leaving Ant Nido, making its way into the whiplash, and finally will pull into Bighorn.
crisp fall morning back in the valley, we catch and find an 1883 built 10 wheeler, number 168, with a historic passenger consist in tow. This locomotive, on display in Colorado Springs' Antlers Park from 1938 until 2016, was restored in house by the CNTS crews in Antonito, led by Stathi Pappas until 2020. We'll catch in October as it flies through the valley at Hangman's Trestle and rounding the upper loop of the whiplash. The 488 and the Antonito train pull into Osier, where the passengers are fed. This train will end up backing onto the loop here to allow the train to return to Antonito as everyone on board each train return to their originating terminals. Meanwhile, heading back west of Osier, we catch the 487 crossing the highest trestle on the line, 116 foot tall Cascade Trestle. Built of the same design as Lobato, it was cast over this chasm by 1889. We next catch the train as it rounds out of the Los Pinos Valley. 488 is rolling here across Apache Crossing, about halfway between Los Pinos and Cumbres. Before the summit, the 487 pulls its train around the Cumbres Loop. This hairpin layout helps keep the grade to the absolute minimum. Today, after the Denver and Rio Grande Western abandoned the railroad and the Cumbres and Toltec took over, this location has now taken on the name Tanglefoot Curve.
Having watered and the brake test complete, the train rounds Windy Point high above the Wolf Creek Valley. Across the highway, we watched the train rattle down past Perry's Pond, named after noted Colorado Railroad photographer Otto Perry, who caught many a train here. Heading downhill and having topped off at Cumbres, there's no need to fill the cistern here at Cresco as the aspens here have exploded in their full autumn peak. Rolling off of the Lobato Trestle, we ramble through the Bacolic Meadow here. The water tank remnants here are not original to the railroad, but the remains of a late 1960s movie set known as Weed City. While the town and depot for the movie are long gone, the supports for the water tank still stand, famously being used in the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, as young Indiana swings from the tank to evade capture from those after the cross of Coronado.
We're back in Chama Yard Limits as we close out this retrospective on the Cumbres and Toltecs 2020 operations. Thank you for joining us and make sure you check out some of our other videos on this channel. You guys are still here? Go home. It's over. Hey, but if you haven't already, make sure you click one of these other videos. Like, subscribe. Up here. So you can help out Zephyr. Huh? Do it for Zephyr. Hmm? You want to thank the people at home, Zephyr? Come on. Come on, man. No? Okay.